Hi, my name is Nate Haug, and today I'm going to be going through the process of porting a module from Drupal 7 to Backdrop CMS 1.0. So the module I'm going to port today is a relatively popular module on Drupal.org, uh, the external links module, which uh, wrote a long time ago. And this module uh, is really pretty simple. All that it does is it just adds these little uh, external link or mail icon images next to all external links on the site. So it's mostly uh, a JavaScript driven module, um, but it has a fair amount of configuration and is going to be a really great example of uh, the basic process of porting a module from Drupal 7 to Backdrop. So let's go ahead and get started. To start, uh, we need to get a copy of the module into our installation of Backdrop CMS. So I've already got an installation of Backdrop here, uh, and in the modules directory, this is where uh, contributed modules normally would live. So I'm going to make a clone of this project. So check out the latest version of the 7.x branch, uh, and I'm going to take that and clone that into this directory. Okay, now I've got a copy of the external link module for Drupal 7 in my Backdrop CMS site. Um, of course, at this point, if I go to the modules page uh, and I look for this module, you will see that you can't yet turn it on because uh, we haven't yet said that this is a Backdrop CMS module. Um, a Drupal 7 module won't work immediately with Backdrop, but as you'll see, it, it only takes a little bit of work to get it going. So the first thing we need to do is open up the .info file for the external link module. And inside of here, we just need to change uh, this line here that says core7.x into backdrop1.x. Um, you can, in theory, actually support both Drupal 7 and backdrop at the same time, but for a lot of reasons, that's not actually a very good idea. So we're going to remove the core equals 7.x line and add the backdrop equals 1.x line in here. Okay, and then we'll go back to the modules page, uh, reload, look for external links again, and you can see uh, that now you can turn on the external links module. Um, and then I'm going to go to the uh, configuration page for this module, and you can see that uh, the configuration page itself actually still works, uh, and I can actually even check these options and turn them on and off, and they, they still save into the database and still are retrieved fine. However, uh, if I go to the front end of the site, um, what I should be seeing here now is I should be seeing the little icon here that says that this is an external link or that this is an email address. Um, but it's not working quite yet um, because there's some differences between the way Backdrop and Drupal 7 work. So the first thing, now that we have uh, the module actually being turned on, uh, now what we should do is, is try to figure out why this JavaScript isn't executing in the first place. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up this module uh, in our text editor or IDE <clears throat> and try to figure out why this isn't working. Uh, if I were to look at the source code of this page, um, because this is largely a JavaScript-driven module, um, I might want to check to make sure that the JavaScript for this file is actually showing up. So if I did a search for external link, um, you can see the CSS file is, is pulling in fine. That was defined in the .info file. Um, but then there isn't actually a, a JavaScript file here. So the JavaScript file for external link isn't getting added. So if I look at the code here, you can see here that uh, here is where the JavaScript normally would be getting added here in hook page build. And so to understand why this might not be getting called or might not be working, I might try um, to see if this gets called at all. Um, and we can see that, you know, hook page build actually isn't getting called here. So I might uh, go and have a look and try to figure out why this is. Uh, and I would probably go to uh, the API website for backdropcms.org. Uh, this is a fledgling site right now. It's, it's really just kind of getting off the ground. Um, but I would go here to find all of the change records uh, between 
Backdrop, CMS, and Drupal 7. So I would look for uh, hook page build, for example, and I would see that perhaps there was a change to hook page build uh, as part of the uh, drag and drop model for building layouts. So layouts are probably one of the most powerful features in Backdrop and one of the main differentiators from Drupal 7. It's basically panels like functionality and core. But as a side effect of that, um, some things like hook page build and hook page alter, uh, these hooks no longer exist because the page renderable itself is also gone. So uh, if we were to read this, we would see that the suggestion here is just use hook preprocess page instead uh, if you're going to be doing things like adding JavaScript to the page. So to fix this, we would say hook preprocess page, hook preprocess page, uh, and just change those two. I suppose we would also uh, add in the variables uh, parameter, although we don't necessarily need it here. Um, if we wanted to modify the variables in preprocess page, we could. So with that change, we can now go back to our site. Uh, we can flush all of our caches to pick up the new hook. And now there we have it. We have our little icon working next to our external link here, uh, as well as the mail icon next to email addresses. That pretty much would do it for porting this particular module, external links, from Drupal 7 into Backdrop. However, we wouldn't really want to leave it like this. Um, one of the primary reasons why you might want to be moving to Backdrop from Drupal 7 is for configuration management. Um, this allows you to move configuration between different development environments or staging to your production site. And if we were to go here and uh, look at the list of exports here, um, we wouldn't find the configuration for external links here because what we're doing is we're still saving all of these values for external links into variables instead of the configuration system. The variable system is still there uh, for backwards compatibility, but it only works uh, if the compatibility mode is turned on. You wouldn't normally want to use variables for any reason on an actual backdrop website. So what we're going to do is uh, go through the process of actually porting uh, these variables into the configuration system. Okay, so back in our module, um, the first thing we'll probably want to take a look at here is this settings form, the settings form that we turn on and off uh, all of the options for external links. And we can see here that we're doing a whole bunch of variable getting for all of the various options. Uh, and then down at the bottom of this function, we use uh, system settings form to create the save button and the submit handler. In Backdrop, uh, system settings form is deprecated. It still works to save things into variables, but uh, if you want to port this and save this into configuration, you need to actually specify uh, a submit handler explicitly. So what I'm going to do here is add a new uh, button here. First of all, I'll make the actions wrapper. Okay, adding the submit button and give it a value or a label of save configuration. Okay, and that makes it so that we have a save button again, but there's no submit handler in this module out of the box. So what I'm going to do is add uh, a submit handler as well. So based on the function name, it's external link admin settings is the name of the form. So I'm going to add the word submit to it uh, to indicate that it's a submit handler for this function. Uh, just for starters, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a Drupal set message and say external links configuration saved, just so that we can see that it's working. So with that change, I'm going to go back to the settings page for external links. Oh, of course, uh, I also need to return the form. There we go. Okay, so now our settings form 
uh, if we change these options now, you'll see uh, that we get the message, external links configuration saved, but these options are no longer being changed because we've removed the system settings form magic that saves those things into variables. So what we need to do here is we need to now save all of these values uh, from form state into a configuration file. So normally what you would do is you would look at um, form state values uh, and see the values that are being uh, submitted here. So I entered a, a debug statement to see all of the uh, values that are in form state. And now I need to take all of these values and save them into a configuration file. So this is our first introduction into configuration. So it's really pretty easy to use. Um, all that we have to do is, is create a new configuration object by using the config function and then specifying the name of the config file we'd like to save. Uh, it's pretty typical that you would call it uh, the name of your module dot uh, settings for the settings uh, for your particular module. And now this config object, um, you can read about the documentation for it uh, directly in line or from the API website, but it has basically three basic uh, methods. Uh, as config get uh, to get a configuration value out of a file, configuration set to set a configuration value, and save to actually save that onto disk. So what we're going to be doing initially here is we're going to be taking all of these values from form state uh, and then saving them into individual uh, values in, in the config file. So again here we've got things like external link class. So you would say something like set this to values. There we go, external link class. And then when you get down to through the list of them, you would say save down at the bottom. Uh, now we're already prefixing this or naming this particular file external link settings. So we know that everything in here is going to be external link in the first place. So you might want to do things like just shorten up the name of these settings a little bit because there's no need to say external link class when you're already inside of external link settings, for example. So this is just for starters. Uh, I'll comment out this debug statement. Uh, we're now creating this new config value or this new config object, uh, setting a value for it, uh, and then saving it to disk, and then setting a message. So let's try that um, just all, just this one particular thing. So I'm going to hit save. Uh, the external links configuration is saved. And now we're going to see what that actually did. Uh, over here in our installation of Backdrop, I'm going to look in the files directory. Uh, and then there's a config directory with a random hash attached here. Uh, and inside here, there's two directories, active and staging. This is where configuration files are stored in Backdrop CMS. So I'm going to open it up, and I can see right here, uh, near the top of the list, is my new configuration file, external links settings.json. Uh, if I open this up and then look at it, uh, you can see here that it has that one option that I saved. Uh, the name of the configuration file itself, and and that's it. So we're now successfully saving this value into a configuration file. Uh, in order to complete this, um, we then go through uh, all of the uh, values and form state values and save them all into the config file. Uh, I've already got these all uh, typed out already, so I'm just going to copy and paste them in here. So one of the nice things about doing this explicitly, although less convenient and less magical, um, it does allow you to do things like typecasting all of your individual settings so that you don't have checkboxes saving as um, string 0 or string 1. You can actually cast that to a Boolean and then save it uh, into the configuration file as the proper data type. So with that little bit of changes uh, in place, uh, now I'm going to go through here and save again. Uh, and then take another look at my external link settings file, and you can see 
that all of the settings from this page are now being saved into a configuration file. Okay, that does it for updating our settings form. We're now saving all of these values into configuration. However, uh, if we change any of these values, the form itself will still be showing you the values from their variable counterparts. So what you would want to do now is, is replace all instances of variable get in this module with a call to config get. Now you can do things like uh, you can directly call config get, for example, uh, and then say external link settings. And this will read the external link settings config file and pull out the external link class setting. Only now it, we shortened it so it's just external, or so it's just class now with no prefix. Um, you also don't need to specify the default value anymore. Um, because when a configuration file or when a module is initially installed, its default configuration is copied into the active uh, config directory. So we no longer need to specify defaults, but um, we do need to say which file that config will read from. So this approach would work, and you could replace uh, variable get with config get in every single place that you had one. Um, but it would be discouraged taking this particular approach because every time you call config get, it's actually loading that file from disk on the fly for that one particular request and then it throws away the red configuration file. So instead what we'd want to do is make this more efficient um, by using another config object, again using the config function uh, and say external link settings to create that new config object just like we did in the submit handler. And then instead of using the config get uh, procedural function, we would instead use the method uh, config arrow uh, get that particular setting. So we would do that basically for all of these options in here uh, where we said variable get before, we would shorten that down and change it to config get, uh, removing the prefix and removing the default value. So I would go through and do that for each one of these as so. Uh, I could probably speed this up a little bit if I uh, did a find and replace. Okay, so now everywhere I have one of these variable gets, replace. I guess I can't actually replace. Uh, I could with a regular expression of some kind, but... Okay. Okay, that does it for this particular form configuration. So now that that is all in place, uh, I just guess didn't get quite all of them yet. Uh, okay, I think that does it now. Okay, we still have some more calls to variable get uh, in the actual page callback, but for now I'm, I'm just worried about uh, updating this form. So now uh, I've got all this form updated, uh, now as I check or uncheck these options, uh, you can see that they persist between page loads. Uh, and when I change these options, um, my configuration file over here, this is in the active uh, config directory. You can see that as I change one of these op options over here, uh, now this has been changed. So the classes have been blanked out. And when I check these options again, save. Now the settings are back there. So that does it for actually saving our values into configuration and pulling them back out again in this configuration form. Now we just need to replace the remaining locations uh, here in preprocess page. So I'm not going to go through this uh, entire process again uh, of just copying and pasting. So I'm just going to um, copy a finalized version into here.
Okay, and now we have all of our configuration now pulling from this uh, single configuration file read in up here and then pulled out all of the individual values down below. Uh, now if we go back to our configuration page, uh, you can now see that we can turn on and off these various options, like I can turn off the icon options, uh, now the icons go away, and turn them back on, and that is pretty much it. Now all of our configuration values are being saved into a configuration file and being pulled out and read. Um, one other thing we need to do when saving into configuration files like this is that we need to provide a set of default values when the module is first enabled. And so normally to do this, uh, we take the configuration file that has already been saved and we just drop it into a config directory in this module. So if I go back to my uh, root directory of my project here, uh, and then I go into the files directory, config, active, and I get this external links settings file, I can just copy this file, make a new config directory, uh, and then paste in that file. And this uh, config file here is just all of the values that I've saved, uh, all of the ones that I would like uh, in their default state. Now if we go to the configuration management settings page here, uh, we still haven't gotten to the point where we can export this configuration. Uh, if we go here to the list of configuration and look through the list here, we still can't see the external links configuration. And that's because even though we're saving into a configuration file, we haven't yet exposed this information to the overall configuration system. So to do this, we need to use uh, a new hook, uh, hook config info. Uh, and we can get this information from the API website, api.backdropcms.org. Uh, and there's an example here of hook config info that you can copy and paste into your module. So I'm going to take this, uh, paste it into the external link module, uh, rename it so that it is ext link config info, put the doc block in. And now there are two different ways that you can use hook config info. One of them is to uh, expose an entire list of configuration files like uh, this example here for image styles. It's also what you would do for like content types or taxonomies. Anything where each individual configuration is in a different file. Um, that's not the case that we're really concerned about here. Here we only have a single configuration file uh, that is in the entire module. So we'll use a second example here where we just set uh, the name of the configuration file, extra link, extra links .settings. Uh It's in the group configuration, and you give it a title, external links can, or settings. There we go. And now we can go back to our site, uh, clear our caches. And now we can go into the configuration group and we can see that we have the external link settings here um, that are now exportable through this interface. Uh, if we want to, we can also take these, uh, copy and paste them, paste them into the single import, and now we can move this configuration back and forth between different environments. Uh, it'll also show up in the full site export and uh, you'll be able to see diffs of what has changed in this uh, individual configuration file when moving entire configurations between different sites. So that does it for moving all of our settings into configuration files, uh, which is the primary reason why you'd probably want to move to a backdrop site in the first place. But there's still a couple more things that we need to do to fully port our module. Um, one of the biggest changes that we have um, is merely the fact that Backdrop is not uh, called Drupal. <laughs> so Drupal has a lot of functions and methods and variables that all actually contain the word Drupal in them. Uh, like these examples here, like Drupal add JS or uh, Drupal get path or Drupal set messages or 
any number of functions or methods that all contain the word Drupal. And you don't have to rename these because Backdrop contains uh, a backwards compatibility layer that wraps all of these functions around the new Backdrop equivalents. Um, but that mode isn't necessarily turned on on all sites. If we go to settings.php in this site, we can see that down at the very bottom of the file, there's an option here for Backdrop Drupal compatibility, and it's on by default, meaning that it's possible to run modules that work on both Backdrop and Drupal 7 sites at the same time. But if you're going to have a fully Backdrop native module, you probably want to make it so your module works with this setting turned off. So if I turn this setting off just by commenting it out uh, and reload the page, you can see external link now starts throwing errors saying that Drupal get path cannot be found. So what you should do is, when porting a module, just do a find and replace on the entire module. Uh, for find Drupal and replace with backdrop. Um, there are two ways you should do this. Um, you should do it both for lowercase and uppercase because code is case sensitive. So search for a lowercase Drupal, replace with lowercase backdrop. Uh, and we should also uh, do the same thing for uppercase. For example, in JavaScript, uh, it's always capital D Drupal for the global Drupal variable. And it's interesting to note that this, this was working with the backwards compatibility mode turned on, meaning that even in JavaScript, uh, Backdrop is wrapping all of these Drupal namespaced variables and methods for us. So if I take this again and I say search for Drupal, replace with Backdrop in the entire project, uh, that makes it so that now uh, all of the functions and all of the methods are now all using the word backdrop instead of the word Drupal. So if I reload this page again, now my module is working again, configuration is working again, and uh, we're all good. One final change we'll need to make to our module is to update the way that tests are discovered in backdrop. It's actually very similar between uh, Drupal 7 and Backdrop. There's hardly any API changes within the tests themselves, other than renaming uh, the word Drupal to, to Backdrop throughout them. But uh, the way tests are discovered and exposed has changed in Backdrop. In Drupal 7, uh, if you have a, a particular test class, normally what you would do to expose the test class to the overall system is you would use this get info static method uh, on the class that provides information. Uh, in Backdrop, we moved this into a .info file because one of the downsides of using a static method like this is that every single class for testing in the entire system had to be loaded in order to show the list of all tests in the system, uh, which took a lot of memory and could exhaust all of the, the memory available. So we've moved these into .info files just like you declare a module, you also declare tests in .info files. Uh, for this, I'm just going to uh, reference an existing module. Uh, I'm going to go into the block module, and you can see this is the uh, tests.info file for block module, where we have the class name here, uh, the name description group, and then the file that contains the tests. So I'm going to take this uh, and make a new file. That is xlink tests.info. Uh, paste this in just for reference. And then copy and paste the values out of uh, this get info method. So name, description. Oops. Go oh, and in external links, this is just called xlink.test. There we go, and now we no longer need this get info method inside of the test. All right, uh, now with that change, we can go to the testing page. Uh, it won't show up immediately because, oh, it did actually. Normally, you'd have to clear your caches, I may have cleared them recently enough. Um, so 
hit this uh, checkbox here, and we can see that the test should now run without any problem um, because the tests themselves are actually really identical. It's just the way that they're discovered that has changed in Backdrop. There we go. We've now finished the porting of this module to Backdrop CMS 1.0. Uh, in this case, for this module, it was a five-step process of doing all of these conversions. Um, first, we updated the .info file to expose the module to Backdrop. Then we went through and modified things for API changes. In this case, uh, we really only had one significant API change, which was the removal of hook page build, uh, and we replaced it with hook preprocess page to add JavaScript to the page. Then we went through uh, and rewrote all of our calls to variable get and variable set to use the new configuration management system. Then we went through and replaced all of the Drupal namespace functions and methods with the backdrop equivalents throughout all of the code. And lastly, we updated the discovery mechanism for tests to make it so that our simple tests could be found by backdrop's testing framework. That does it for this entire conversion of this module. It'll be up on GitHub in the Backdrop Kintrip group as a module that you can download and install on your Backdrop sites. Thanks for watching.